Dear brothers and sisters, as we gather together in uh, many different parts of the world, we all are looking for a peaceful life. No one wants any turmoil in their life, but irrespective of trying to be peaceful, we find that our life is not as peaceful as we would like. Little, little things in life seem to take our peace away. And we start to think about uh, times when we were peaceful, we find a commonality in those states. Whether it was peace that we found for ourselves when we were sitting by a lake or a river or an ocean, whether it was peace which we found when we looked at the peaks of a mountain, whether we had a peaceful time when we were in the forest, and enjoying all that nature has to give to us. Or times when we just were sitting by ourselves in an environment which was loving to us, which was calm and peaceful. We find a commonality which runs through most of those times. And what is common is when you start to think about what was truly happening with you, those were the times where we were not focused on anything that brings turmoil into our life. Those were our times when our thoughts were less. And if there were any thoughts, they were all about times of love, times of being with loved ones, and times which are peaceful. And so when we start to look at our lives, we find that just the day-to-day -day existence of being able to deal with our family, to deal with our friends, to deal with our co-workers, and to deal with others all during the day at times that start to bring trouble into our life. Because we as human beings, within ourselves, focus too much on what others think about us. We're worried if our parents think that we are a good child? Do they think, do we work hard? Do they think that we are doing our homework well? Do they feel that we put in enough effort to our studies? As children, we're always very worried of how our parents respond to what we do. How many times have we heard from our parents that we don't know how to behave properly? How many times have we heard from our parents, no to this and no to that? And so as we grow up, we are always trying to impress our parents so that they feel that we are doing a good job. The same thing happens between our siblings and our spouses. And then when we go beyond that, we find that when we are with our friends, we are all trying to show of ourselves as being better than who we are. And as we go on this ego trip, whether it's the ego of experiencing ourselves as being one who has 
spread of their wealth, with the spread of our knowledge, with the spread of our intellect, a spread of our physical strength, we find that these states where we start to think more about what others think of us than what we really are, are times which are very, very difficult for us. There's a very interesting story about uh, a king from the past. This is a very loving and a just king. This was a king who cared about everyone in the kingdom. And so people in the kingdom all loved him tremendously. They liked the king very much. Over the years, he would go and meet with all kinds of people in the kingdom. He would uh, walk into arenas where there were people who would be working to make a living and he would sit with them, he would eat with them, he would talk with them and they had access to him. He would go to, at other times, those people who were very big intellectuals and he would sit with them and talk with them. He would go to other arenas where there would be people who were very, very good in sports and he would mingle with them. And, and he would find ways and means of getting to all kinds of people who lived in his kingdom. So everyone revered him and they loved him. And it took many, many years of him being able to have everyone feel like that. And then with time he grew older. As he grew older, the advisors who were advising him, the members of his cabinet, started to think about what would happen if he would physically pass away. So they looked at the prince and they felt that the prince was very egotistical. The prince would always talk about him being a prince. The prince would deal with people in a manner in which he would look down upon everyone. The prince would not mingle with those that he felt was below his dignity to mingle because he would order them to do this or to do that. And so the members of the cabinet decided to have a meeting with the king. So they met with the king and they talked about their fears about the prince becoming the king. Now the prince was very obedient to the king. And so the king was a little taken aback because he always saw that side of the prince where the prince would do anything that the king would ask him to do. He would be uh, very caring about the prince and uh, he would always try to be in the good books of the king. But when all his advisors said something to the contrary, the king decided to watch him more closely. So in a few weeks, as the king was watching how the prince was behaving, the king realized that the ego of the prince is gone out of control. So the king thought of ways and means by which he could teach the prince to be able to deal with his ego. So one day when the prince came to the king and asked the king, is there something that I can do for you? The king said, yes, I would like you to do something more than what you're doing. And the prince asked, yeah, I would love to do whatever you like me to do. And the king said, I would like you to serve the common people. I want you to go into the kingdom and help people and serve them. The prince was, he goes very high. 
thought to himself, I just don't even go to the areas which are not clean, which are dirty, which have people that I think are below me. But here the king wants me to help everyone in the kingdom and serve them. But since he was obedient to the king, he started to do that. And this was very difficult for the prince. He had never helped anyone. He always took help from someone else. And so, in a few weeks, the prince was feeling that his life has become very, very difficult. And the king, who was watching the prince very closely and trying to get all kinds of reports on what is going on with the prince, wanted to take another step. Because he really wanted the prince to be a humble person. He wanted him to be a loving person. He wanted him to be a kind person. He wanted the prince to take care of the kingdom after he was gone. And so one day, as the king called the prince to his chambers, he said, I want to have you do a chore for me. So there was a basket in the chamber that the king pointed to. And he said, I want you to take this basket. And he said, I want you to go to the west part of the kingdom. And towards the end of the west part of the kingdom, there is a bazaar or a shopping center. And I want you to buy these kind of vegetables and these kind of food things and these kind of fruits. And he gave him a list of things to buy. And then as you buy them and as you collect them, I want you to put the basket on your shoulders and come back with the vegetables and fruits and come back to me. The prince, as he looked at the basket, started to think to himself, you know, if I'm going to fill this basket and put my back and walk through all the people who are going to live between here and the west side of this kingdom, everyone's going to see me like a hummed and walking back with this um, uh, basket of vegetables and fruit. And he started to think about how people are going to think about me. What are they going to think? But since he loved the king a lot and wanted to do as the king would like him to do, so he took the basket and he went all through town to the west side. As he got to this bazaar, he started to buy some vegetables, some fruits, some this thing, some that thing. And what happens is, generally, and those of you in the old times, if you go to buy vegetables, many times they put water on the vegetables, they want to keep them clean, put water on the fruit. So when they put them on the basket, and he put the basket on his shoulders, you know, some leakage of liquid started to happen. And this happened, his clothes were getting dirty and solid. And as he's walking through the kingdom back to the palace, the prince is thinking to himself, how am I going to face these people? He thought everyone was staring at him. He thought if there were a group of people going, they look at him and they start to turn their face away and start to laugh. And so he started to feel very bad inside of him. But he got to the kingdom, and when he came with the basket full of fruit and, and vegetables, he um, was happy that his trip was done. But when the king saw that some of the vegetables that he'd asked him to buy had leaked and one thing was another on something and fallen on another thing. So he asked the prince, these vegetables are covered with something else now and something else has fallen on something else, so here's what I would like you to do. 
I want you to go to the east side of the kingdom and right where the kingdom starts is a very nice, natural, pure water spring. So I want to take all these vegetables there and clean them there with that fresh spring water and bring them back. So now the prince is thinking to himself, not only did I go to half part of the kingdom this way, now I have to go to the other half. So other people would be watching me, he thought. And so as he went, he's putting his head down, he's got this basket on his back, his clothes are quite dirty, and he's walking there, he gets to the spring, he cleans all the vegetables, and he walks back. And all the time he's thinking, people are looking at me, they're making fun of me, what are they thinking? They must be thinking, how is the prince doing things like that? And so he's now feeling much more worse than he did when he came back the first time. So when he came back to the kingdom, the king said, okay, now all of these things are cleaned. I want you to go to the cook and give him all of these things and tell him to cook these for dinner, which we will have, you and me, we'll have with the members of the cabinet later on tonight. He says, after you've given him all of these vegetables and fruits, then come back here and see me. So the prince goes to the cook, gives him everything that he's collected and comes back. So the king tells the prince, he says, I know your clothes have gotten bad and solid and wet. I want you to go change your clothes and I want you to go from the kingdom and walk with your new clothes and I want you to go all the way to the bazaar. And when you go, I want you to stop wherever you can and ask the people, did they see anyone walking with a basket on their shoulder this morning whose clothes were getting solid? And then I want you to go to the other side, to where the spring is. And I want you to walk there and, and ask the same question of the people and then come back and tell me what you heard. Now the prince is walking to the bazaar and he's asking, he sees some people on the way and he's asking them, people like who are store owners or something that he thought he saw when he made the first trip. And he asked them, did you see someone with a basket on their back? And everyone said no. None of the people that he talked to on the way going to the bazaar first and then coming back to the palace and then going to the spring and coming back to the palace, not a single person told him that he'd seen anyone with a basket on the back. So when he came back and the king asked him as to what did he find out, he said that no one had seen anyone with a basket on the back. And that is when the king told him, when you were going, it is you who were thinking that people are watching you. But no one was watching you, they were busy in whatever they do. And this is what happens to each person on a daily basis. We all think too much about what others are going to think about us. And in that process, we bring turmoil into our life. And the king made the prince understand that if he would lead a life in which he would be just himself and would consider everyone else to be the same, rather than think of what they're going to be thinking about him, he should actually focus on not on the outside, but what is within himself. Who is he? What is he supposed to do? What is his relationship with others who are living in the kingdom? And when he starts to focus on those questions, he will come to the answers that everyone in the kingdom was one and the same. 
They could be rich, they could be poor, they could be uneducated, they could be educated, they could be more intellectual than others, they could be more knowledgeable than others, but they were all one and the same. Because in reality, when we dig deep within ourselves, we all realize we're not the body, we're not the mind, we're not the intellect, that we are soul. And that soul is conscious, and that soul is a part of God. And as we realize that we are soul, then the realization also sets in that everyone else is a soul also, is also a part of God. And then we start to look at them differently. So the king asked the prince to listen to the inner voice, focus on our inner self, experience who the prince was. And once that realization sets in, then his life would be lived in a manner in which ego would be controlled. Because once we realize we are all one and the same, then we live with humility. We live with love, we live with compassion. And it is said that it is then that the prince had a major change in his life. He started to care about others. He understood that as he met someone, he was not to focus on their outer signs, but to see an extension of the Creator. And as he realized that, the means to be able to focus on ourselves started to be unfolded to him the means by which we meditate, the process of meditation, whether you call it inversion or going within or connecting with the divine power of light and sound of God, it's all different names of recognizing who we truly are. So once we recognize who we are, then our relationship with others gets better. And when our relationship with others gets better, and when we don't focus on what they're thinking about us, then life gets to be peaceful. And whether it's with our spouses, whether it's with our family members, whether it's with our friends, whether it's our co-workers, whether it's with people that we meet in our day-to-day -day activities, all of those interactions get better and better and better. We all want to lead lives which are peaceful. No one wants to be in turmoil. No one wants to live in anger. No one wants to destroy the peace that we all want to achieve. So it's a question of being able to focus on our real existence and be able to experience ourselves at the level of a soul. Right now we're living at the level of our physical senses, so because through our physical senses we interact with others who are also made a matter, we feel that that's all we are. But what gives life to this body is our soul, and as long as that soul is in the body, this body is alive. So the experience of us being a soul can be had by each and every one of us. And the process by which we can experience ourselves at the level of the soul is called meditation. So let's sit and meditate for a few minutes. Please close your eyes very gently, just like you close them when you go to sleep. Your eyeball should be straight, focus eight or 10 inches in front of you. And as you close your eyes, those of you who've been initiated in the message of the beyond, please do your simran. Those of you who are new here, please repeat any name of God that you feel comfortable with. This repetition of God's name should be done mentally and not out loud. I pray to God Almighty and to the three great spiritual masters of the past century, Hazur Baba Savan Singh Ji Maharaj, Param Sankapal Singh Ji Maharaj, and the gracious spiritual master Sandarshan Singh Ji Maharaj, to help each and every one of us here connect with the divine power within ourselves and to experience the divine light in its effulgence. We'll be sitting for a few minutes. I will be getting you out of the meditative state 
at that time, and my best wishes are with each and every one of you.
प्लीज लिव ऑफ छोड़ दीजिए जी